from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass during the season of Lent. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of her son, Jose Joel Rosales. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And so now, as we enter the season of Lent and we are called to turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel, let us ask the God to give us the wisdom to know the occasions of sin and the courage to turn away from them. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the salt of the earth, Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light to all nations. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant your faithful people, O Lord, may be so conformed to the Paschal observances that bodily discipline, now solemnly begun, may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. If the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and keep all my statutes, and do what is lawful and right. They shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them. For the righteousness that they have done, they shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness, and commit iniquity, and do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live? None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered, for the treachery of which they are guilty, and the sin they have committed, they shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. And for the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. The word of the Lord. i 
soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. If you, O Lord, lay bare our guilt, who could endure it? yourselves of all your sins and make a new heart and a new spirit. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, the disciples came to him, and he taught them, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said of those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable of judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before you go to the altar and go. First be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while the two of you are on the way to the court or the accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Ash Wednesday, we heard those words, turn away from sin and be faithful to the Gospel. Something negative, turn away. Something positive, fidelity. They are two sides of the same coin, and Ezekiel mentions that in our reading today in a different way. <clears throat> he speaks about the sins of a sinner, the sins of a righteous man. And he speaks about a tradition that they had in that time, and it continued even to the time of Jesus, namely that the sins of the parents have repercussions on their children to the third and fourth generation. Meanwhile, God's generosity is so great that if you live a good life, your, it has repercussions to a thousand generations. It's an exaggeration, but it just shows God's great generosity. In a way, there is truth in the fact that the sins of the parents have repercussions on the, their children and grandchildren. I know of a family in which husband and wife were both alcoholics, and it turned out that all their sons became alcoholics as well. But I also know of families where husband and wife were, uh, mother and father were alcoholics, and the children realized that they didn't want to have these consequences, and they made a pledge not to touch a drop of alcohol. It was a matter of taking a hard and firm decision. It was a matter of taking responsibility for their lives. It was a matter of learning from what the, the mistakes and the successes of others and either, <clears throat> either avoiding them or taking control of your life. 
It was a matter of, as St. Augustine says, there but for the grace of God go I. It is a matter of being humble and realizing I can't manage by myself. But if I am to turn away from sin, if I want to be faithful to the gospel, then I have to rely on God's grace. I have to realize that God is helping me. Speaking about addictions is always very painful and brings back very sad memories. They are the biggies, as we would say, alcoholism, gambling, pornography, which pretty well affects the lives of almost 80 to 90 percent of us in some way or the other. And then they are the what we call lesser addictions, but still control our lives and prevent us from being really faithful to God. Things like being oversensitive and being unable to forgive by being jealous and envious, by being lazy and slothful. All these small addictions, as we may call them small, pretty well cripple your life and mine. But the fact is that we are human beings, and all these addictions are there in me as seeds in my DNA. I've got a capability of doing all of them or one of them and being addicted. But by the same token, I have been made in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, there is in my DNA things that are good. There is a spring of hope. There is a tower of strength. There is the seat of wisdom. With wisdom, with courage, with hope, I can overcome these addictions with the help of God. And the Psalms tell us exactly what we should do. It speaks about three positions, walking, standing, and sitting in the company of sinners and scorners and the wicked. And the Psalm, the very first Psalm, gives us a pattern of our life. Happy is the person who does not walk, does not stand, does not sit in the company of the wicked and sinners. When I walk with a, with a sinner or with the wicked, I know that I'm paying a little bit of uh, attention to them. There's a certain amount of commitment. I walk with them and then I come to the crossroads and they go their way, I go to my way. But I have been committed in a little way. But as I walk along, something attracts me and I stop and I stand and I listen. It involves a deeper commitment. And finally, the commitment of actually sitting down and listening to a sinner or to the wicked involves something totally different. And this is what it means by turning away from sin, is to avoid the occasions, avoid the events, avoid the people <clears throat> that will cause me to turn away from God, but turn to sin and rather be unfaithful to God. And Jesus will pick up these things in our reading today. When Matthew wrote this gospel, he was writing to Jewish converts, Jews who had decided to put their lot with Jesus Christ and believe with Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. And what would happen now? They believed in the law, and the law was paramount, even more important than the prophets. It gave them a sense of identity. Now, Jesus is the new law and the prophets. And Matthew tells us he sits, he goes up to the mountain and calls the disciples. It's a sense of protocol. I am the teacher, you have to sit at my feet. It's a sign of respect. And you will see that it does not happen so much in the West, but in the East, for instance, very often the priest sits a little higher up, his chair, his pedestal is a little higher up. But whenever the gospel is read, if it's read by a deacon, he must come down the three steps. He cannot be on a higher step than the gospel. You will notice that in the Far East, somehow or the other, we don't do it over here. But Jesus was going to speak to the disciples. And he says something very important. He said, the law is important, but that is only the foundation. For every believer, you have to go more than that. The law says this, but I, as the lawgiver and the teacher, say you have to go further. Jesus didn't come to abrogate the law, as we know in Matthew chapter 5. He says every law, every detail of the law will be kept before 
uh, heaven and earth will pass away. And so Jesus calls us and challenges us. It is not so much the things that I do, but it's a change from right within myself. It's a change of my very behavior. It's a change of my mat uh, attitude and mentality that will help me to turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. May God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. <clears throat> For those in our daily televised mass community who have asked to pray, to be prayed for, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sponsor from Scarborough, Ontario, and for the sponsors who make this mass possible, not only for people here in Canada and in the States, but all across the world, so that we may profit during this time of Lent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who during this Lent take an extra effort to seek a deeper awareness of God in their everyday lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, listen to the prayers that we bring through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus who lives forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed God. God. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <laughs> Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in these mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our, brother and, our brothers and sisters. Remember Joel Rosales and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle and with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, make take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer of Lent. Look with favor on your people, O Lord, that, what they, that their observance outwardly de declares it may inwardly bring about through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.